A bit crusher is a form of distortion, and its purpose is to lower the quality of a digital audio signal. It creates some recognizable lo-fi effect, reminiscent of old gaming consoles like the Game Boy or the Super Nintendo. But it can also be used more subtly to add a bit of grit or a bit of warmth to a sound, just like any distortion effect really. Any audio signal, when it's recorded into a digital format, will be cut into small chunks. Each chunk will hold a value, and when you put all these values together, you get the waveform of the sound you recorded. It's exactly like a photo you see on your computer screen. It's made of pixels, and each pixel holds only one color. Let's take a moment to see how that works a bit more in details. It will make everything easier to understand the bit crusher. When the sound is cut into slices, the number of slices per second is called the sample rate and the default sample rate in the majority of music software is 44,100 hertz. So that's 44,100 slices per second. That's a big number. And that's because to record a note properly, we need a sample rate that is at least twice as fast as the frequency of the note we want to record. That is called the Ninquist limit. So we can have at least the two peaks of the waveform and we can know its frequency. On average, the highest frequency a human ear can hear is around 20,000 Hz. So we need at least a sample rate of 40,000 Hz to record it. So with a sample rate of 44,100 Hz, we have a little room to be safe. I open a quick parenthesis, other little trivia, in video the standard sample rate for sound is 48,000 Hz. And that's because in cinema we have 24 frames per second. So having a sample rate that is a multiple of 24 made it easier to synchronize the sound with the image. End of the parenthesis. Now, for each slice, it will record a value, and the precision of that value is called the bit depth. Like in any computer, this value will be noted as a series of zeros and ones. Don't worry, you will never see those numbers, it's just the software doing its thing, but the thing is the software will have a limited amount of slots to write the value for each slice, and these slots are called bits. If it writes the value on two bits, it will only have four different options to write it, 00, 01, 10, and 11. So the more bits you have to write these values, the more precise it will be. And generally, for a WAV file, the bit depth is of 16 or 24 bits, which is a definition of respectively 65,000 and 16 million different possible values for one slice. Now, the purpose of a bit crusher is to lower the quality of an audio signal, and this is exactly how it will achieve that. It will reduce the sample rate and the bit depth. These are the two main parameters you will see on almost all bit crushers. So what does it mean for the sound? When you lower the bit depth, it will introduce some stepping in the shape of the waveform. And changing the waveform means changing the harmonic content. So this will add harmonics above the fundamental. The more you lower the bit depth, the more the waveform will look like a square wave. And that's what will make your sound sound more like an old video game. For example, the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis had sound in 8 bits and other up to 12 bits, and Game Boy had them in 4 bits. But don't let this fool you. You can make very powerful sounds at a low bit depth. The Roland TR909, for example, which is an iconic drum machine, had a bit depth of only 6 bits. Lowering the bit depth can also reduce the dynamic range, because you'd have less possible values between the minimum and the maximum amplitude. So you can lose some subtle differences in the volume, and it can also bring up the volume of the noise floor compared to the volume of the signal. And it can also introduce some quantization noise, which sounds like a white noise with a low-pass filter on it. If you want to have a cleaner sound, it's sometimes better to boost the volume of the sound that goes into the bit crusher, so the dynamic would be higher. Because of this noise that can be brought up, I prefer to have this kind of effect on synthesized sounds instead of recordings. And when you reduce the sample rate, which is also called downsampling, you will introduce a lot of artifacts to the sound. As said before, to record a frequency properly, you need a sample rate of at least twice that frequency. 
So when we reduce the sample rate, some higher frequencies in the sound will become simply too high for the sample rate. And because we don't get enough samples to describe them, they will be misinterpreted as lower frequencies. And this is what we call aliasing. So it will add inharmonics to the sound in completely random places, even below the fundamental. This creates a particular sounding distortion that is very characteristic of digital. And by the way, a lot of digital distortions suffer from the same aliasing problem. Because the distortion adds high harmonics, some of them will be too high for the sample rate, and so they bleed back as lower frequencies. So if you want to avoid this aliasing sound, you can use a low-pass filter just before the bit crusher. Filtering out the higher frequencies will prevent them from causing problems, so you can get a much smoother distortion this way. You can even make it sound like an old tape recording. <coughs> So a filter is a really good companion to a bit crusher. This trick is cool to create some more subtle effects that can help a drum track or a vocal track to pop out a bit more, for example. You can even try to put an LFO to control a low-pass filter or a band-pass filter, so it will add and remove some random harmonics from the aliasing, and it will create a distinctive oyoi sound. <laughs> If the original sound is a static waveform, lowering the bit depth will create a waveform that is static but with steppings, whereas reducing the sample rate will create some stepping in the sound but with motion. And because the speed of this motion depends on the frequency of the note and the sample rate, it can be a good idea to resample it if you want the same motion for every note. So I wish you have fun experimenting with all that. That will be all for today, so thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you all next time.